I've never really shared my story of how I struggled with bulimia for over seven years, all throughout my 20s. And if I'm honest, this video, I feel really vulnerable and I was really nervous about making it, but I feel that it's absolutely necessary to share with you what I went through and hopefully offer other people in the same situation some hope that it is possible to get better. Now, my bulimia started as a result of some undiagnosed digestive illness, which actually didn't get diagnosed for seven years. So my story is a little bit different in terms that it was atypical to start with, which means it doesn't follow the normal pattern. So I was experiencing really terrible digestive issues. I was getting bloating and fullness. I wasn't going to the toilet. I was getting acid reflux. And I remember the very first time I ever made myself sick. And it was purely because of the digestive discomfort, the fullness, the pain, the nausea. And it immediately made me feel better. And that quickly spiralled into something that I considered to be a short-term coping mechanism for the digestive discomfort that I was going through. And what started out as completely innocent, the first time I ever made myself sick, it was not intentional. I did not do it with the intent of losing weight. It was purely to remove the discomfort, the physical discomfort that I was going through. And it ended up being that short-term coping mechanism. However, I did experience some secondary benefit from this behavior. And what I mean by that was it gave me something else. And as a teenager who spent years and years and years dieting and longing to be thinner, when I started losing weight as a result of the digestive illness, and then the eating and purging was that I did lose weight and people would comment. My friends would comment, you know what girls are like at school, saying how great I looked, how skinny I was, how lean I was. And it made me feel good. And as someone who spent years not feeling good enough, for me, there was an underlying belief that I was not good enough. And this goes way back to when I was seven or eight years old at school. However, as a result of growing up in society and all these other factors, I ended up believing like many girls do that I needed to lose weight in order to be liked, in order to be attracted, in order to be successful. And the weight loss that came from the bulimia was that secondary benefit. And this actually made the bulimia a million times worse. And the more I repeated this, the more that I was doing this behavior, the stronger that belief system was ingrained into me, that weight loss was absolutely essential in order to me to feel good enough and good about myself. And what it did, it, it changed me as a person. When I look back at who I used to be, I cannot believe what I was doing to myself. But when you're in that moment, you were like blinkered to anything else going on in your life. It's like being in this little isolated box. And I was displaying some really strange behaviors, which is really common in people with bulimia. So I would go through periods of restriction as I just used to be so scared of certain foods, on partly because of the physical symptoms that I was getting with my digestion, but also in part to do with weight loss. So I feared certain foods, I restricted them. And then when I was on my own, I would allow myself to eat them. And of course I was starving, so I would overeat and then be hit with the guilt and have to go and throw up. So a lot of this was happening in secret, but when I was around people, I would quickly make excuses after dinner to go to the toilet. I would save my showers till after dinner so I could head to the bathroom or I'd just make an excuse and go and do work in my room. So it was really isolating. And it made me withdraw from all of my family, from all of my friends. And it changed me. 
I wasn't the same girl that I was, say, the year before or when I was younger. I just became this shell of a person. And I lived in denial for a good five or six years because I didn't believe that I was sick enough to warrant getting help because on the outside I was still a highly functioning human being. You know, I was at uni, I graduated with two degrees, I landed corporate jobs, I went to the gym seven days a week, I still went out with my friends. So for some reason I just thought, well, if I needed to get help I would be sick because I was still doing all of this stuff and that in part kept me from reaching out. In addition to all the guilt and the shame I was experiencing inside, I didn't believe that I was sick enough to get any help. However, what this did, it was it led that behaviour to continue, continue purging, to continue restricting, to continue doing all these unhealthy behaviours until one day I had a heart scare. I woke up in the middle of the night with awful chest pains to the point I couldn't breathe and I passed out. And that for me was the wake up. And unfortunately, it took something like that for me to literally snap back into reality and wake up. It was like I'd been dragged unconscious and I was just going through this trance for years. And it took something so serious for me to actually wake up and think, maybe actually I do need to get some help. And that is such a common thing, and I hear this from many, many people, is that they don't believe that they're sick enough to get help or that they are worthy of asking for help. But I'm hoping that by just sharing this story and hoping other people can realise that even if your path does not follow the typical or textbook path of food struggles or an eating disorder, it is still absolutely essential that you reach out and get help before it goes down the wrong path and more significant serious consequences happen because these things are serious and you weren't getting help and I am that's the one regret I have is not reaching out sooner before things really became so ingrained within me and I started getting these complications so if you're struggling right now then my inbox is always open please reach out to me and I hope that by just listening to this story gives you some hope that even if you're in that place, like me, you can come out the other side, but you don't need to do this alone. So please reach out.